Okay, g'day all, welcome to my new video series on assembly language. Uh, this channel started out with assembly language actually, but um, my earliest videos are terrible. They're, <laughs> they're absolutely horrid. I mean, you can't hear anything out of uh, one of the earphones. And um, yeah, I thought for a long time that it would be nice to redo them. I think I can explain things better and just give it another shot. Talk about uh, what is really uh, probably my favorite language of all. All right, so modern X64 assembly language, we're going to call this. Um, this is just a little introduction today. We'll have three smallish demos at the end of the uh, intro, just showing uh, how how we can jump into assembly and start actually coding something. Uh, two of those will be the same as what we did in the original uh, video, but uh, the last one, I just want to show how you can jump into assembly without using um, a C++ main method. Anyway, assembly language. All right, so what is assembly language? Uh, assembly language is a generic term for the language of hardware. So there's a lot of assembly languages around. We've got uh, desktop and laptop PCs have an assembly language. Microcontrollers from your, your PIC or what's the other one? Atmel, they have assembly language. Uh, even graphics cards have their own assembly languages. This video series is going to be about x64 assembly language. So that's the main assembly language of a modern CPU. Um, most desktop CPUs and laptop CPUs from Intel or AMD use x86 and the modern version of x86, the 64-bit version of x86 is called x64. So yeah, that's what we're going to be programming. Whoops. Delete, settle down. Okay, machine code. All right, the the CPU actually only understands machine code, but machine code and assembly language are really one and the same thing. So machine code is just a long string of numbers. Uh, but in assembly language, instead of remembering like a number uh, for an instruction, say add, uh, we can just remember the mnemonic, A double D, add. And instead of remembering like addresses in RAM, we can name variables and use the names that we use. Yeah, so assembly language and machine code are very, very closely related. And actually, assembly language is so low level that anytime you want, you can jump into pure machine code and code uh, with nothing but numbers if you want. <laughs> it doesn't come up often, but sometimes that's useful. Alrighty, so pros and cons. Uh, assembly language teaches us how the hardware works. Assembly language is not distinct from the CPU. This language is etched onto the CPU in silicon. It's actually there. It's a part of the CPU. So understanding a piece of hardware's assembly language is the same as understanding the hardware. And that's very helpful and very important sometimes. Um, it's good also to learn assembly language because it's a brand new programming paradigm. So a lot of the modern languages that you hear about day to day, such as um, your Pythons and C++, Java, C Sharp, uh, they're all very, very similar in many ways. But if you get to another language programming paradigm, something like assembly language or even Lisp, um, it's really interesting to learn that there's ways to do uh, problem solving that have nothing to do with these object-oriented languages. Um, assembly language is very, very different from any other language. Um, and it's good to learn new ways to problem solve. It's just interesting, you know, as an exercise. Uh, I think assembly language helps us code better in high-level languages. It's good to understand the way that high-level languages work. Um, sometimes that helps us to write faster or more optimized code, more efficient code, I guess is probably the word. Um, learning assembly language teaches us how like functions are called in C++ or, or what objects are in object-oriented programming. It's nice sometimes to know uh, how these things operate. Um, yeah, it can help us become better uh, C++ programmers, better high-level uh, language programmers. Okay, assembly language can do things that are difficult in other languages. Yeah, I tell you what, it basically comes down to um, assembly language is just a tool. And like any language, uh, there's some things that it's really, really good at. So it's really good at what's called SIMD, and we'll have a look at this a lot later. Uh, I've already put up a bunch of videos on SIMD. It's an interesting, interesting topic. Um, assembly language can also do really wild things like self-modifying code. You could, you could do self-modifying code in other languages, but you'd, you'd basically have to learn machine language anyway. So, I mean, you might as well just learn assembly. 
Uh, you can write drivers, operating systems, kernels, compilers, embedded devices, anything low level programming uh, assembly is generally uh, preferred. So something like a bootloader, um, you know, when the computer first loads up, it's not going to want to read C sharp code. It's, <laughs> it's going to want some machine code and you're going to want to write that in assembly. Uh, all right. So the other thing that assembly is famous for is that it's, uh, it's really good for optimizing for speed uh, or even size. Um, often you can squeeze out some, some extra performance for your, um, tight loops and that sort of thing with assembly language. All right, but it's not all good. So assembly language is difficult to debug and maintain. Um, yeah, a few thousand lines of assembly language. And I tell you what, it's really hard to know what's going on. Really hard. Uh, that's very true. Optimizing compilers are better than any human at optimizing. Well, I just put that in there so that I could laugh at it. That is absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> um, they just aren't. Yeah, I, I can optimize better than an optimizing compiler. Uh, so that's, that's completely wrong. But that's a con that you'll hear a lot. A lot of people are under the impression that optimizing compilers uh, can outprogram uh, a human being. But at the moment, they can't. And I think for the foreseeable future, they can't. Uh, one day, maybe they can. I mean, I don't know. Uh, but there's a lot of things that you won't have too much trouble um, outperforming an optimizing compiler. It does not offer any abilities that high level languages do not already offer. Yeah, that's very true. But uh, it does some things better than high level languages. I mean, it's just a tool. Like I said before, it's just a tool. Some things assembly is good at, some things it's not good at. Um, so showing windows, printing text to the screen, all of these things involve windows kernel calls. And you might as well just do that in C++, a high level language, because if you were to do it in assembly, you're going to call the same functions. So you won't gain any extra speed by showing a window in assembly. It's the same function. You know, it's the same Windows kernel function. So yeah, assembly is not good at that sort of thing. What it's good at is number crunching. So if you've got a tight loop and you're dealing with maybe image processing or, or video processing, you're making stats computations or sound processing. If you want to do that really, really fast, as fast as the CPU possibly can, uh, assembly language is fantastic for that. It's fantastic for that. All right, so use it for what it's good at. Um, okay, an assembler. Okay, an assembler is a program that translates our assembly language source code file into machine code so that the CPU can execute it. And usually you talk about assembling a program. You don't talk about compiling it, but I tend to use the two terms interchangeably. So if I say compiling an assembly program, you know, you know what I mean. Uh, the assembler that we're going to be using is called Massum, and I'm going to be using Visual Studio uh, more often than not. We did do a little, a, a couple of toots in uh, Linux assembly, but I don't know if we'll continue with that or not. Uh, it was fun. Yeah, you can do all of this uh, assembly stuff in, in just about any operating system now. So even um, Macs, Apple Macs use Intel CPUs, so the assembly language is the same for them too. Um, all right, so... There's a lot of other assemblers. Yeah, you can use the GNU assembler or NASM, but we're going to do um, Massum today. And Visual Studio. Alrighty, so if you haven't got Visual Studio, download it. It's a fantastic IDE, and Microsoft is not even paying me, <laughs> although they should. So Visual Studio 2017 uh, Community Edition is what I'll be using. Um, it's free, and if I remember, I'll put a link in the video description, although I don't know if that'll be the latest version by the time you're watching this. Alrighty, so let's jump over to Visual Studio and have a bit of a look at how we first of all just jump into assembly language. So if we go File, New, we're going to make a C++ project. So what we need is a native project. So something like C Sharp is not native, um, but C++ is. So we need um, something native. Um, let's say this is just get off there. Let's say this is called uh, awesome to one. All right, new C++ project, I chose empty project, and I'll call it awesome to one. And first of all, we'll just go through basically what we went through in the first uh, video I ever made, which was, um, I guess, a little hello world, although it doesn't actually display hello world. Because hello world in assembly is painful. <laughs> Alrighty, so the first thing that we want to do is um, maybe add a main file. So we'll go uh, right click on your project here, go down to add, and then new item, and choose a C++ file. I'm just going to change it to main.cpp, change the name down here to main.cpp, and we'll click add. 
Okay, this is how you call assembly from C++, which is what I normally do. I mean, I don't, uh, I don't usually code entire projects in um, assembly using using what using <laughs> std. I should do this. This is people love this. They reckon that's great. Okay. Um, return zero using namespace std name sappus. Aha. Okay, you do have to type stuff right in C++, it's so annoying. Okay, the other thing that we've got to do is change this from 32-bit, which is how it defaults in Visual Studio, to 64-bit. So you do this by clicking up here on the little Configurations Manager and just choosing X64. Um, if you're using earlier versions of Visual Studio, that was uh, slightly different, but that's all you've got to do nowadays. Um, I might actually also right-click on here and add the build dependency. So. Massim, the macro assembler, is going to take our assembly source files and assemble them. Um, but we need to add Massim as a build customization. Otherwise, you know, Visual Studio won't know that the .asm files are to be assembled. Uh, so make sure that little Massim box is checked there in build customizations and click OK. Um, we'll add a function. I might just make it return an int and we'll call it some function. And all we'll do in C++, we'll call that function and print out the result. The result is... Mm -hmm. Some function. All right, and we'll write this function in assembly. Okay, so we'll right-click over here and add our assembly source code file to our project. I'll just call it assem.assem because I'm too lazy to think of anything else. And dot .code and some function is a proc ret some function and p and of rax we'll say one two three okay this is assembly code right here this is massive assembly code so all i'm saying here is that there's a, a procedure uh, or a function called some function and all that it does is moves 123 into the register rax um, we'll look at what these registers are and everything later on, but yeah, that's all it does. And then it returns. Now, what's interesting is that C++ is designed in such a way that anything that's in RAX, RAX is just a variable. It's just a variable on the CPU, a register, they call it. Anything that's in RAX, when a function returns, C++ reads that as the return value. So in this case here, what we should get is... Um, uh, the result is 123. Let's just see how we go. I'll hit run. It's going to take a little while. Actually, I had my computer crash. It crashed completely. Unresolved external, some function. Yeah, you're a moron, Creel. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what I was thinking. You actually have to put extern C there. So extern means that the sum function is described external to this file. And C just here is the calling convention. Yeah, so the calling convention is just how the arguments are passed to and from the function. Uh, C is what we'll be using, the C calling convention. That's a capital C there too. That's important. Okay, let's see how we went. Yeah, there you go. The result is one, two, three. Beautiful. Beautiful. Okay, so that's our first x64 program, our x64 assembly program. What I want to say is that if you're in 32-bit, if you're not making a 64-bit program, well, we can just delete that ASM file. Let's just remove and delete. And if we go back to 32-bit, uh, you can use what's called inline assembly. So uh, in... 32-bit, you can just put ASM like this, and then you're in assembly. You can just mold into RAX. Well, not RAX, actually, because RAX doesn't exist in 32 bits. How do you like that? 28398. That's pretty good. What if we go like uh, int i equals 0? And we see out i. Stop writing is, dude. What do you keep writing is for? I just keep writing is, 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 is. All right, let's see if we mov 28398 into I. Whoa. Yeah, there you go, 28398. 
Yeah, so if you're not in x64, you can use what's called inline assembly. And to do that, you just put underscore asm and then open up a code block and off you go. Yeah, you're right to um, code in inline assembly. I don't usually do that. I rather the 64-bit um, assembly, you get more registers, so it's great fun. Registers are unreal. <laughs> okay, but the other thing that I wanted to show you was you actually don't need C++ at all. So we could just close that down. I'll just say no. And we can just program something in, in pure assembly. I mean, we don't need to call main from, from assembly. We can define the main function itself in assembly. So what I'll do first of all is change back to x64. Um, we'll add a new item and I'll call it main.asm, main.asm. It's traditional to have the extension asm for assembly code files. You don't have to though. Okay, so we could just go code and main proc and ret123 main and p end. So this is a procedure called main and that's exactly what uh, Visual Studio needs in order to In order to run our program, it needs a, a, an entry point and uh, it's going to look for main. So if we define the main procedure in assembly, that's perfectly fine. You know, it doesn't have to be defined in C++. And then once again, we're returning something to the to the caller, just 123 in this case. Um, if we run this, it's not actually going to work. Um, I'll show you. This is, this is a little bit strange. Okay, it says there, unresolved external symbol main CRT startup. I, I don't really know what that means, but what it seems to mean is like, you told me you were going to make a C++ project, bro, and there's no C++ files in your project. I don't know why it checks that, but Visual Studio seems pretty concerned with that. So what we can do is just add a C++ file. They can just be empty. If we just say new item, C++ file, and we call it whatever we want, .cpp. Completely pointless, but now our project will run. Okay, so the project ran our little main method here in assembly and it returned and when it returned if we look down here in our output window it returned 123 because that's what was in RAX. Okay so that's a little introduction into uh, assembly just basically how you jump in and out of assembly using uh, Visual Studio and C++. I hope, um, I hope we get onto really exciting and interesting things. This, this language is it's great fun. It's great fun. It's a brilliant language. And uh, thanks for watching. Adios.